Sousa Perugia with the serve through Semenyak. Itas Trentino receiving for this, the first set of the Volleyball Club World Champs 2022. Lovely start through the middle for Podraskinin. It's a classic move, get the middles involved early, uh, particularly after a nice reception there from Micheletto. Oh, sorry, that was not Micheletto, that was Lavia. Oh, Lavia, uh, Micheletto will take that stat. It'll be pretty much a perfect pass. That's a decent ball in as well. And, and that's a big feature of Perugia, their ability now with, it, with a, that consistency to run that pipe as well as they do. Absolutely. Uh, they've got um, three outside hitters in uh, Leon, Semenyuk and Plotnitsky who all can attack that ball from a multiple array of situations. Kaczynski does what he does. And... Uh, Talking of a, a multiple array of hitters, Trentino with not a, what you might call a, a recognised opposite on court as such, because Gazitsky is an outside hitter. But they've been moving it around, haven't they, uh, Trentino, uh, during the season and last season too, for that matter, with who's playing in the opposite slot. Yes, with uh, Nelly the only recognised or pure opposite on the roster, they have a lot of flexibility. Kaziski has obviously played uh, a fair bit in that position, but it gives them some cover if they need to rotate with the young hitters and uh, bring a bit more experience onto the court. And I suppose as well, depending on, on uh, the, the, the rotation, you can drop the opposite into pass and take your, your front court swing out uh, and give yeah. a, a faster option out wide. It definitely gives you some options as a coach uh, and as a setter, how you want to exploit what the opposition provides with their block. Micheletto, big serve from him, but well dealt with. Oh, well, that's also well dealt with. Lavia waiting for that one, and he gets the better of Semenyuk. He's, you can see his starting position there on the block is very aggressive. They're aware that the pipe is a weapon for Perugia, and he, he is almost in the middle of the court as the ball is leaving the setter's hands. He had a big decision to make because he had the threat coming out wide as well. It was a great block. Micheletto will serve again. Oh, I say, a hey, serve, Micheletto. This young man, he's 20 years of age, and he's just getting better and better. It is unbelievable what he can do, and it's been years playing at this level already. And as you said, only 20 years old, big left-hander, can create a lot of problems for anyone in the world. He's had a meteoric rise, European champion, under-19 world champion. He's a under-21 world champion. He's a world champion as well, and all in such a short space of time from 2021. At night there, from 2019 to now, won all of those medals. Just incredible. And, and I heard as well, fascinatingly, that he started out as a Libro, but then shot up and suddenly, right, I better put you outside. Whoever made that decision probably made the right one, but you can see it in his, his reception. His, his technical ability shows that he spent a lot of time working on it, and it helps when you end up growing up to be more than two metres tall. Yeah, there's not many 2 meter eleven left-handed outside hitters, even at this level of volleyball, with, those, with that skill set he's got. Well, the risk reward, and one thing that you're going to see throughout this match is the it are the missed serves, because at this level you're trying desperately aren't you to stop the other side having all their attacking options so you've got to serve tough otherwise you get that you get a, a ball in the middle you get all your options it's so difficult to defend against and for all the attention that uh, Simone Gianelli gets uh, Spertoli is uh, a really really capable setter and also quite a young player himself yeah 24 years of age Spertoli he's he was understudy to Ginelli at Trentino, now has the, uh, the helm for Trentino and the pair of them battling well, I think, at national team level for the starting position because if any time Ginelli doesn't play well, Spetteli's in. Oh, we're looking for a block touch to get our first challenge. Those of you who are wondering uh, or are new to, to volleyball watching this one, uh, the coaches can have as many challenges as they like in a set as long as they get them right. Um, if they get too wrong, they don't get any more in the set. They can challenge for block touch, ball in, ball out, ball up, ball down, uh, net touch, and centre line faults. Uh, that doesn't look like it has clipped anybody. Uh, foot faults from the centre line, three metre line, and, and from the baseline. I think that's all of them. It, it varies a little bit from competition to competition, but I think you've nailed most of them there, Clayton. <laughs> Thanks. I know in the Italian league, those of you who watch, you can have uh, what they call Invezioni, whether you're playing the ball on the wrong side of the net as well. Well, that's an ace. That's brilliant. 
Semenyuk's caught out down the line. And just quietly, uh, we see that Trentino is off to a flyer here. Oh, that's such a good place to go, isn't it? Because Flavio's actually blocking Semenyuk's view to a degree. Well, and you touched on it earlier, Clayton, that uh, players can come in and just do their job with this amount of quality around them, and that's what Andrea Anastasi is saying. Let's be calm, let's make sure we're thinking about how we're going to win the next point. No need to stress at this point in the game. Uh, there's still a very long way to go, but as you said, Trentino off to a very good start. Was probably has got a little uh, drone in getting a few shots i'm not sure it belongs to the broadcast but we'll, we'll soon see that's a good leave we're generally back to serve it's a big big front row now for perugia Oh, it's a pretty big front row and he's front court. <laughs> to be fair, as a, a player who can touch the ball as high as he does and, and can have an attack as well if he wants to. Trentino have to come again and they do with Podraskin in. He is, uh, I think we need to call him Mr. In because he, he very rarely misses. No, with uh, both the middles they in this uh, this team... There's just such a wealth of experience. They know what to do at this level day in, day out. Oh, it's another ace serve. And this is where Trentino really can take it to Perugia. And, and it's something that Trentino do have, and I think more so than most any other team that plays uh, domestic volleyball, is the, the wealth of strength that they have from the serving line. It's, it's one big serve after another. But there's no respite for the receivers uh, when you're playing against Trentino. Another huge serve. That's dealt with by Colacci. And a big block, though. And I guess it's kind of the the basics of volleyball, isn't it? Serve tough and put up a good block defense. And Trentino are doing that. Hence, they're leading 12-5. And it definitely changes the equation for a team like Perugia, who really want to use the pipe attack or to play fast to the edges. If the ball's off the net, it gives a, a much more even footing for the block for Trentino. Well, Avia won't be too upset with that. He got himself a point with his uh, previous effort. So he's uh, on an even kill now. Semeni will back to serve. He's got a pretty good jump serve on him when he gets it going. Oh, well played. Oh, brilliant cover, Gianelli. And then that is just Leon... <sighs> Never get tired of watching Leon hit. It, it, for a lot of hitters, this would be a situation to manage. For Leon, it is an opportunity to go full and score. Just a couple of steps, a couple of, um, and he's up, and yeah, it's just brilliant. Just really good to watch. And uh, Semenyuk, another good player. Technically, very nice to watch. He's all straight in the air when he's, when he's swinging on the ball. And he really does whip through the ball as well when he's uh, serving and attacking. Nice play from Lavia. So as a result of uh, so much attack through the middle, there's, there's pressure now on Riklischke in how he's going to stay and help or whether he releases to the outside, which created a little bit of indecision and the space for the pipe attack there. Lovely. Just when you think you've got him, you haven't. What a great angle from Leon. And he does this against the best in the world. He makes it look so easy. I'm just going to hit the ball here. But he's, he's inside the block and he split the defenders at 4-5. <laughs> Having a little look to say, how do you get that in? That's good work as well. From uh, It's always a bit tricky for Mickey Leto. Uh, or any lefty on the left side, isn't it? Because your angle that you open up, you're, you're quite close to the net at times with your swing. There is that element. It's also, you have uh, 
a small advantage in that hitter blockers don't see a lot of left-handers hitting from position four, so the angles are a little bit different. As we see the switch in the block there from Trentino being taken advantage of, trying to get Spurtley away from Leon. Sorry, I've I don't worry. <laughs> The, the, the haircut, the haircut is, gets me every time. It is. And do you know what? It's just like, it, it's me and Mini-Me. That's what I <laughs> you have to call Spatterly Mini-Me, I think, to Kaziski. And that's where, again, how good is it to have Micheletta, who, who spends all of his game hitting on the left side, but then when you do have to run him over on the right side, he's quite happy to do it. It's left-handed. It all suits him naturally. So there's very few weak spots for Trentino in their rotations in terms of, of their hitters as well, isn't it? If, if they put him particularly as outside one and rotation one is, is quite good. It's not really that much of a disadvantage for Trentino. No, having, having that left-handed outside hitter really gives you some flexibility, particularly if you're going to play with three receivers on the court. Not happening at the moment for Perugia. And a timeout called again. Aggressive in battuta, aggressive in attack. Oh, anche a muro, ragazzi, il tempo è bien di là. Stanno meglio sulle direzioni. Well, he started off quite well, didn't he? In the first time out, right? We won the quality. Okay, well, let's be calm. And now it's like, oh, the aggressive, the aggressive. <laughs> New attack. <laughs> he's, uh, he's lost it. He's not lost it. He's just kind of lost his patience a little bit, I think, with the team. Yes. Seeing the scoreboard, probably a little bit of. Uh inspiration or motivation needed to be coming from uh, Anastasi. He recognises that. Hopefully the players can uh, respond. First real test of this Club World Championship for Perugia. And it's come from Trentino. 16-9 Trentino leading. And that's well played by Rich Licky. So Luxembourg uh, by birth, but you were mentioning uh, Liam, he's actually now at a stage in his career where he, he would be eligible to play for Italy. Which uh, kind of adds a little bit of spice, I suppose. And, uh, maybe putting a bit of uh, pressure on R Romano, who's the current Italian number one in the opposite slot. Oh, yes. I just love that attack. And, and it's great. I love the way... And it, that we kind of had that sort of series like come in and then I'll volley it. And, but now it's like, no, no, I'm just going to come in and hit it now. So it's completely guessing all the time the block, aren't they, on that particular play. And as we talked about with Leon before, that what he can do off basically a two-step approach in that situation is incredible. More pressure here on Perugia. And work for Semenya to do and he can't get past the triple block. 18-10, what a start for Trentino. Still shuffling out. No gaps at all. A really nicely formed triple block. Losing that's with the serve. He's got the he, he's very good at disguising a short serve when he wants to. Also putting in a tough serve but that's well played Russo puts it on the floor and Perugia have their side out you yeah, did mention that there's so much firepower from Trentino coming from the service line it's been one of the few opportunities there has been for Perugia to run the, the middle attack they really like to use middle attack and pipe but uh, being denied that opportunity so far successfully Excellent from Trentino there. They've been very solid, very consistent, and I, and I do like the fact, and, and Perugia as well, it's nice, it's quite refreshing to see two kits with just the title sponsor on. <laughs> and that's it. Normally they're just walking billboards, aren't they? At, uh, but then that's the, the, the prestige of playing in the uh, top division in Italy. The sponsors want to be involved, and it's brilliant for, for the game. 
It's, it's definitely one of the more restrained efforts from uh, Perugia. They're, they're def one of the more colourful and distinct uniforms in World Volleyball, but a classic number from Trentino. Very simple, very clean. Some would say really uh, traditional Italian style. Yeah, it's very nice. It's always nice to get nice quality kit. And right now, some very good quality in terms of the volleyball from Trentino. They're six ahead. They need six to see this set out. Perugia trying to get onto the comeback trail. They just can't find it at the moment. Have to go again, Perugia. Oh, that was right to where Podraskini was waiting, and he loved that one. Interesting to see the choice there from the Trentino block in transition. We see Lavia releasing early with uh, no pipe, particularly in the play. So allowing uh, the other two blockers to stay in their half of the court. Nice ball in from Leon. They'd be, it's Leon in particular with Perugia as he's playing at the moment. Uh, look at the speed he's coming. He's almost running that second, that pipe attack at the, nearly the same time as the middle. It's really just the extra distance the ball that has to travel from the setter's hands to the hitter is uh, about the only difference in timing there needs to be with guys that big and that uh, high above the net. As we see Plodnitsky come in as the service sub. Well, he did it all last season and that's why He's got the ball as an overpass and a chance here, but it's not put away for the first time of asking that it is in the second by Rich Liski. So that's serving substitution, working a treat for Perugia. Got a free net in the end. Micheletto thought that the bite was coming. Well, he didn't. Yeah, he thought he was just going out wide, didn't he? Yeah, this is, this is uh, similar to what we saw working in their favour in the previous uh, exchanges, but that's this time Trentino being too aggressive. That, that's the only way Lorenzano was going to get that was if he did a scorpion kick. This is really unlucky. Yeah, fortunate clip of the net tape for Plotnitsky. And now Lorenzetti's opportunity to plead for calm and simplicity in the gameplay. But we talk about having a left-hander in Micheletto as a as an advantage. Here with Plotnitsky as well on serve. The angles are a little bit different. His ability to get the ball to cut in front of the front court attacking receiver. It's a, it's a different situation for players. And he has, as we saw in this last serve, the ability to put one in short. He's a, a reasonably complete package from the service line. And he does leap like a salmon, it must be said as well. So he's contacting the ball from a very high point, whipping it in. That time just taking a bit off it, taking Lavia out of the attack, but not Podraskin in, who crunches that one. So we can see from the reception there that Perugia really going forwards not paying any respect to Kaziski from the back row another serving change for Perugia on comes uh, Julio Cesar Cadenas Cuban international played in the Challenger Cup this come ex exciting 2023 Volleyball Nations League with Cuba Going to be competing in that. Nicely done by Micheletto. It's nice adjust. Spurtley being stretched to his full reach to control that ball. So not being right on the tape for Micheletto, but finds the angle cross-court off the block hands. I know it is.
is Spare Tully, who will serve. Testing jump floater dealt with by Leon. Oh, yes, what a swing that is. But is it? Oh, it is in, despite what Micheletto thinks. Nice hit by Rich Lickey. Got it off of, of Micheletto's hands. Still low, looking pretty comfortable this set for Trentino. Three side outs would do it. There's one of them. That's a gift from Rich Lickey. And letting them off the hook in uh, rotation one. They're usually the most difficult situation to side out for for a lot of teams. So that's a, a stay of execution. Not a stay of execution. It's a, a relief for Trentino. Good serve. Going after Leon as the front court swing. Getting him off the net. Good dig by Lorenzano. Well, that's a good out from Rich Lickey. Oh, yes. Fabulous. And we can see Marek Kaziski not quite being able to close the block, exposing the middle of the court, and Rich taking advantage. serve but fabulous I mean, so um, that play then right is kind of what we're seeing more and more of now big serve you're out of system it's high it's up there and there's one option against three blocks do you spend it in Friedrichshafen for example a lot of time working on that type of out of system ball because it seems to me that there's there's an awful lot of it now and and the attackers are getting really good at dealing with a well-formed block uh, it's it's a balance between being able to execute the set to give the attacker a chance to be aggressive and the counterpoint of can your block be effective and disciplined and organized and neat so that it is the hardest possible situation for the attackers. So it's, it's good you can work both elements at the same time, but the idea that hitters can be aggressive in this situation, but also there's a lot of teams where they will look to recycle or... or push that ball against the block and have another play which is also becoming a really important part of the game oh, we just got a really good example of that because it's getting the first one getting blocked on the second one and, and the patience there waiting for the next opportunity and taking that opportunity to win the first set a bit of a comeback then from Perugia but Trentino hold on they take the opening set of this gold medal match and it's Kaziski who fires it past Ridgelicki and it's set up very nicely for set two to come how are Perugia going to respond they started really slowly and they cannot afford to do that again against this informed Trentino team who are looking for their sixth club world championship gold medal have a look at where the ball has been served and yeah, it was kind of evident wasn't it watching it that they're really going after the front court swing hitter more often than not and putting a lot of pressure on Leon to try and make it a little bit more tricky for him during the course of that set and equally to take the ball away from Kalachi who's going to be receiving in the middle and on the from this angle right hand side of the court more often so to really put the stress on, on the receivers who are attacking, but also to not have the ball going to the best receiver. Wish I could sing like that. Wish I could play the accordion as well. Can you sing, yeah. Liam? Can you play any musical instruments? Uh, sing well, no, but <laughs> uh, I can play a few things. Yeah. Ah, good man. Wonderful in-between set entertainment and a wonderful first set for Trentino, taking it 25-20.
So you, you've travelled the world, Liam, assistant coach with Australia um, and coaching at domestic level. And you've seen, I'm sure, quite a lot, if not all of these players in the flesh playing for their national teams. Across all of the players that you have seen since you've been coaching, since you've been involved with volleyball, who for you has been the one player just thought, my goodness, they are amazing. The best player you've seen. I, it's, you can put a lot of names into the conversation, but uh, Wilfredo Leon is different. It's I, I can clearly remember at uh, VNL in Rimini, the one game where he had was it 13 aces, and we were on the warm-up court uh, getting ready to play after them, and you could hear when he served. It just sounds different, how he hits the ball, how physical he can be, and there's no situation where he can't take over a game. We saw in the, the Italian League playoffs last year, even when he's not fully healthy, he is still an absolute handful for any team in the world to play against. It does seem to be that that it is Wilfredo Leon is the name that is keeps rising to the top as the player of world volleyball, uh, this generation of players. The conversation I often have when uh, we're recruiting or trying to build a team is well, we start at Wilfredo Leon and work our way down from there. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we're going to get away with the second set now underway. And Leon's going to get his first swing and he puts it away. Brilliant. Not a great matchup for Trentino in that rotation. Certainly, uh, try as he may. So, Wilfredo Leon is two metres and one. He's taking that at 332. The net height's 243, for those of you wondering. Eight foot, same height as the uh, crossbar in soccer. Although we don't talk about that. World Cup, what about it? Not interested. Just concentrate on the volleyball. Italy didn't even make it to the uh, to the World Cup, so uh, everybody from Italy definitely be focused on the volleyball here, that's for sure. Well, success is all relative. Uh, Australia definitely had a successful World Cup by our standards. Yeah, most definitely. So far, it's a successful campaign here for Trentino. <laughs> she then he's like, I don't know why he sprayed my leg. It obviously, <laughs> no, that's not what he said. <laughs> he must have just caught his shin on something. I think he just got the clip, didn't he, under the net. Oh, good touch. That's excellent from Russo. Well, it's always a danger, isn't it? Everyone, a couple of players moving laterally, clattering into the wing blocker. That's a good touch from Russo. Just a little bit of contact there on the block, unbalancing uh, Leon. Spare till he gets to serve again. Good lead by Leon. You're not passing that ball, you're defending it. And then there's no way through. It's a huge wall. The block devils have woken up. Even in slow motion, that looks like it's a, a difficult ball to handle. I think we, we would be able to pass it in slow motion. That's for sure. Goodness me, what a block. Plotnitsky. He's kept his place on court. So he's taken, he's uh, replaced Semenyuk because Plotnitsky. Three, three. Better start this for Perugia. You don't win 18 games in a row without being able to work your way back into a, a game after a slow start. And that's where you do need that, that strength in depth, don't you? Not just for a game like this, but for a, 
for a kind of season that Perugia have got and have, you can't just rely on seven, eight players to get you through that season. Good touch. Lovely from Plonitsky. And we talk about Trentino's power from the service line. I think there are few teams better in the world at attacking the high ball than Perugia. Oh, set. Oh, block! Plotnitsky! Well, there's a man who wants to make a, a name for himself. That's phenomenal against Kaziski and timeout called by Trentino. So Lorenzetti there talking about uh, the high ball and block. Just as we'd mentioned there, Perugia is such a good high ball attacking team. But also to find uh, a solution to the their high ball attack as well. Kaziski there, one on one, probably his advantage. But the block devils. Yeah, they called it for a reason, aren't they? I mean, they are incredible. When they get a sniff of getting a block, they'll take it. Oh, that's huge. Russo, we were talking about the firepower Trentino had from the serving line. And now it's Perugia who are stepping it up with ball in hand. That's excellent from Russo. At 105 kilometers an hour from what's a, what we would call a hybrid serve. It's the float toss. It's a spin. Well, that one's, uh, and for once, Podraskinin is not. He's out. No, it wasn't. It was Lizinats. So that'd be why it was out then. Podraskinin's always in. That's a tough one, isn't it? He's drifting away to his left and trying to, to hit the small angle down at five. Oh. Excellent. Plopnitsky again. He's, he's been uh, a revelation so far in this second set, coming in and replacing Semenyuk. And Trentino really nice, needs to find a solution for this Russo hybrid serve. He's, uh, he's got them backing off and he's bringing a lot of heat. Maybe op opening up an opportunity for a short serve or a float, but the aggression here is working for him. Yeah, I remember seeing Bieniek first time with the, with that hybrid float so I don't think I'd seen anyone else do it before and it's like what is this and it's it's such an effective serve isn't it yeah, the ability to keep the receiving group uh, unsure or uncertain of what's coming until the last possible moment uh, one of the things Bieniek does as well as anybody is he disguises which serve is coming and Russo has been doing a pretty good job of that so far in this set Lizinats with the serve. Oh, good block. Great block. It was just, just for once for, for Gianelli. I felt he's kind of four metres there. Probably it's a little too far for, that for him to fire it into the middle. If he was on, if he was another half metre in front, then all his options would have been available. I think Trentino knew that. They know him so well. They played with him for so long. Yeah, it's as, having such a big setter has the advantage of he can still play fast for most uh, situations on the court, but the angles as he comes off the net with the middle, sometimes you need a little bit of adjustment with a smaller setter to get the ball in front of a, a middle. That's a good ball in. Yeah, well played, Kaziski's into the block and then into the antenna. So the pressure there on Plotnitsky having to help with the ball shifted towards position two, that he has to stay a little bit longer for the first tempo attack and not quite being able to get over the net to block Kaziski there. Well, 
There you have it. They're a little bit closer to Flavio as well. And then Ginelli's like, yeah, I can find you from there, buddy. Flavio's thankful for it. His ability to create space for his hands to go through the ball and keep it in front of Flavio for a guy of that size is, is seriously impressive. pace on it but it's just the wrong side of the baseline oh, it's a bit too tight but well it's the next best thing to the ace serve isn't it you get the overpass that's bounced away at the net by the blockers So we talked in between sets about the, the service area that Trentino has been uh, targeting. So you see Kalachi coming over there just a little bit further to try and help uh, Wilfredo Leon out. And as a result, extending beyond the area that he can control the serve. So, a little bit of discussion about the adjustment of the block against Kaziski, uh, what they want to do there, because uh, the momentum of the games has swung back in uh, the favour of Perugia, but still need to be on top of the details. Excellent. Leon over two huge blockers. He never really had much of a run up either from where he was with his, uh, where he had to pass the ball, but look at that. Again, looking to exploit that matchup, uh, Leon against Bertoli. But the hands of the block, they're reaching out to the antenna and opening up the seam for Leon to hit through. Nice touch. Set from Russo. And as a result of that, Perugia have another point and extend their lead. Actually, quite a good play there from uh, Lavia. The ball taking two touches off the block on the way through. Scramble this one for Trentino. It's into transition here. Plotnitsky! Oh no, he hasn't found the court. Goodness me. We saw Micheletto absolutely crush one before in this situation. Plotnitsky trying to go one better and not quite finding the necessary part of the court. Oh, we can't believe he missed that. Neither can he. Got some passing to do. No, no, they don't. Not quite found the baseline. Good leave. I guess um, you must know this. Well, I say you must know. Um, I'm not going to put you on the spot. But the, the, a serve like that from Rich Licky is a, a classic example of a, a jump serve. The time from contact of hand to contact on, for example, there, especially to Leon. Has there been much done in the study? I mean, the, the actual reaction time you got is probably it's less than a second, right? Or maybe just a second. It's, it's quick. But uh, it's as much about reading the cues from the server. So the body position, the toss, also what you prepared before the game with scouting, you have a pretty good idea of what most servers like to do. 
Uh, even guys like Leon, their tendencies that they uh, like to fall into, particularly power servers, you can predict reasonably well, though he can put the ball wherever he wants when he feels like it. It's guys like uh, Gianelli and also Micheletto who have a lot of variation in what they can do with their serve. And it's one of the problems that, uh, sorry, Clayton, that uh, Plotnitsky causes for teams. As the left hand of the angles that he makes, he can go short, he can go power. It's uh, it's an equation that needs solving. Yeah, you've got a bigger version of that, haven't you, with with uh, with Micheletto with his contact height. For once, Russo doesn't get a run going, and that's great as far as Trentino are concerned. Four behind, and plenty of points still to play with in this set. Nice block from Podraskinin. Gotta love how the way, I mean, the, Podraskinin's always trying to get out, he's reacting to the ball, he's chasing the ball effectively, isn't he, as a middle blocker, but doesn't give up, doesn't give in, and by the time he gets his hands there, he's getting them there as the, as the attacker's having the swing. Yeah, there's a reason why he's been one of the best in the game for a very, very long time. But also his ability to get his hands over the net even when moving the long distance laterally. Uh, it, the temptation there is to really reach out and keep the, your hands on your side of the net, but his ability to get his hands onto the other side of the net is what makes him effective there. Oh, good pass. <laughs> well played, Kaczynski. He got blocked a couple of times. He uh, wasn't too pleased with it. He's certainly making sure of it, of it now. Well, I guess it's a good spot to go in as well. That's, that's a wonderful pickup. But just taking the, the hand nearest the antenna where you can, or taking the hand in the angle he was going to, it would have been so easy, wouldn't it, for him to try and hit back because he's brought inside and then put it right into the meat of the block. Oh, what a touch! Well, he's still continuing. Well, not any longer. Nicoletta put that way too close to Flavio. You can see with Trentino, this is uh, something that was being discussed before in one of the previous timeouts. Their ability to manage these high ball situations. That uh, the last couple of sets to Kaziski haven't quite made the target he's been trying to find solutions and again they're in transition the high ball not being able to score Plotnitsky is got a bit of a license they're up by four you can no pressure on him from the serving line but they're watching on I guess for him for Trentino it's more the 21 year old uh, Belgium international more of a a learning curve for him being a part of this setup. Chance of getting on court pretty slim. Well, it's got to be a double touch against Podraskin, surely. Indeed. Double point and going to the other side. Yeah. Double point to the other side. Well, that's fair enough. Denny Cespedes is saying that the, the it was a double con a double touch, but I'm calling it because you've set it and you've doubled it and it's gone over the net, gone over the other side. That's what he's saying. It's, it's almost that question of intent. If uh, you can almost get away with a double at a high level of volleyball, as long as the ball more or less goes where you want it to go. Yeah, I think over the years, haven't we, we see more and more leniency, and it, it makes it makes perfect sense because for those of you that are watching who don't play volleyball perhaps that much or don't you know be, be new to the game and you see that coin like well why have they been called for that and maybe there's a, there's scope in the game just to take the double touch out of it altogether and not call it at all yeah it's a uh, it's an ongoing argument i don't have a particularly strong opinion either way about that i think the rules of the game exist to create challenges and solutions for teams if you can be creative with your solution then you uh, you win the rules, exactly. But I guess as well, 
if you do double touch it on your side, well, you're kind of making it difficult for you anyway. So it kind of is a place to an advantage to the team that are waiting for it to come over eventually. So, yeah, it's, uh, I guess it's all about making the game as, as pleasurable as you can for the viewer. And watching that is very pleasurable, seeing Leon do that. Uh, he just coming and cutting off the ball at a higher point than the block was ready for. They expected that that ball would probably be another two or three feet towards the antenna, and he can just step inside and crush that ball cross court. Semenyuk on to serve. And play a bit of defense, potentially. Good ball in. Good up by Lorenzano. That's an excellent chase from Plotnitsky. And still the rally continues. Don't get many of them. Oh, what a pick up by Kalachi. Lovely work. Plotnitsky coming in on the 10. And all of which avoiding that massive amount of perspiration on the court as well. So that's something that uh, Lizzie Nats goes for the middle and then has another jump as well. He almost made that block. And we talked before about the ability to get the hands over onto the other side of the net. There, the move laterally and not getting the hands over opens up the space for the ball to go down the front. Spare Tully ready to serve. Finish it off here with his serving abilities. And we talked before about the, the options that Trentino have as we see Javaronok enter the game. This is one of their solutions that they can provide. They can bring another receiver in, they can bring in a player to hit just from position four or from position two. It's the flexibility of having this many good receivers on the roster. She almost knocked over by that serve. Nice up from Lorenzano. And again, good cover. Fabulous work from Trentino. They're not going away just yet. Again, the ability from Micheletto to generate that power off a really short two-step approach. Oh, good up by Kalachi. But it's an opportunity here for Trentino to get to 20. Kalachi denies that for the moment. Oh, good touch. That's well watched by Lavia. And a massive swing from Donovan, who's snuck onto court. What a thwack from Donovan Javaronok, the Czech Republic international. Thank 
Schiletto readies himself to serve. He's had a couple of serves where he's gone and put the ball right into the corner at one and got himself a aces during the course of this tournament. I haven't seen him try that just yet. Oh, Lanzano, what a dig. And it's Perugia who come up with the points and good defending deep at six by Semenyuk. set from Ginelli. Perugia, two points away from levelling up the match. Well, that was good work, got a, a, an inside ten. For that. It's a... yeah, as the lefty, that, that ball probably comes a little bit naturally just in front of his hitting shoulder, then in running on the other side of the middle but the, uh, the overload in that part of the court. Yeah, Polotniski had no clue, did he? He's got Donovan coming at him, and it's like, well, where's he come from? Oh, dear. Shafalonok has played that out, but they think there was a touch, so they're going to challenge it. Block touch. Yeah, you really do have to challenge here. Uh, otherwise, you're in a, a very difficult situation if you're Trentino. Being down 24-21, but 22-23, there's still hope. Got to think okay, as well, aren't the you? Team, the team is strong, okay? Donovan has volleyed this, he's volleyed it off the fingers. Oh, he hasn't, he's missed them, hasn't he? Set point for Perugia. Well, it's not in, but they think it's in, so they're going to challenge again. They've got one left. Ball in, ball in, ball out, ball in, ball out. That looked a little bit more out than in, to be ball fair. In, ball out. Okay, okay. I mentioned the stay of execution before. That might be what this challenge is. We'll find out very soon. Oh, it is in. Look at that. So the set rumbles on a little bit longer. <laughs> That's nice between the two coaches. He's made ready to change. Let's like, just wait a moment. <laughs> Oh, what a serve. Brilliant from Kaczynski. And now it's 23-24. Last chance for Perugia to win the set from siding out from Cambio Pala. There's no more timeouts left. I don't think... Oh, trying to, oh my, I got the memory of a goldfish. He took two early on in the first set, didn't he? I think he's, he, he might still have one left, Anastasi. He's going to let it ride. And that's why... Kaczynski overcooks it. Perugia take the set, 25-23. It's one set all here in Betchim. Well, that was quite a turnaround, wasn't it, from Perugia? I know they changed Semenyo can put Plotnitsky in. But from, from what you saw in that, what, what did Perugia do well 
in that set that they just weren't able to do in the first. Or for one thing, they received better uh, in terms of they gave themselves more opportunities to attack. They definitely did a better job attacking on high balls. Uh, and conversely, the uh, challenges from the Trentino side of the net, the ability to get Kaziski good quality swings from the right side of the court. And when you don't have a pure opposite on the court, uh, that really puts some pressure on the other guys. So we saw a little bit of a decrease in output from Lavia in particular, but uh, the high ball attack from Perugia really creating trouble for Trentino in that set. Oh, we got an official review of balling out and where it went. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's more like it. Technology's great when it works. So looking at that, I mean, there's a lot through the middle for Trentino, isn't it? Well, why not when you've got uh, Podraskinin and, and Lizinats? You can find them, you're going to go to them. Plus, uh, some of those as well will have been uh, pipe attacks. That was Leon's 115 kilometers an hour. Goodness me. And you can see the spacing there being uh, used by Perugia. They're trying to get the block to, to move, 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 and then when the space is there to go back towards position two or even position one with Riklitschke and uh, give him the best opportunity to score. So he's maybe not as big a name or as well known as, as some of his teammates, but he is an effective player, particularly when he gets good looks in good situations. Well, talking of, of players, you know, not, not that well known amongst the teammates, Gabriele Lorenzano, 19 years of age, the Libro starting this one. He's come from Taranto, uh, they were 10th last season. He's a European under-18 champion and a European under-20 champion in 2022. So, so quite clearly talent at junior level, but he's certainly making it show here at senior level, hasn't he? He's been brilliant in passing and defense. Absolutely, particularly defense. He's, uh, he's been left uh, almost half of the court to defend on the high ball situations and he's made multiple digs. Unfortunately, Trentino hasn't been able to convert that into points, but he's definitely giving them an opportunity against a really fearsome Perugia attack. Well, there's nothing in there. Look, nothing at all. When you look at that, that simple uh, high-level or low-level uh, graphic, one attack more from Perugia and one block more. That was it. Well, I guess this is what we can expect, isn't it? With two teams... <laughs> pretty evenly match really at this level and tactically very very sound very savvy two great coaches in charge and it's going to be small margins uh, or or as we saw in the first set because the margins are generally so small between success you can between success and failure you can suddenly have a five six seven eight point lead in a, in a set just yeah, because some, of how close it can be absolutely some some small adjustments in terms of uh, service tactic or block tactic uh, can can have a, a big change and it's how quickly the other team can respond to that. So we could see there Andrea Anastasi talking to An Antonio Valentini who's one of the uh, the best assistant coaches in the game, has head coached the Italian national team at international tournaments. So getting great support from his bench. Yeah, so I think he was, uh, Valentini was in charge of the Italian team in Rimini, wasn't he? That when they put the B team out, for example, I'm really disrespectful to them, but a B team that had Micheletto in it and, and Bolotto in it. And, and we're all thinking, oh, Micheletto, I wonder if he's going to play. Uh, and he ended up going to play for the national team that year in the, I think it was the 19. So where did they go? They went somewhere, didn't they? And, and he got onto the roster um, for it because they didn't send their big team. But yeah, he was... Uh, very very good coach I mean very um, he didn't take a, what I found really funny from Valen, uh, from watching him coach actually in Rimini was he's got the lads there and all right they're a bit younger uh, anyone said or when he was talking he's like, hey, none of that I'm talking he really did keep them um, in order yeah he's a, an important part of the Italian program and we were talking about the success that the young Italian players have already had at European and world level there's a really strong coaching culture and they've done a really good job of developing the youth players that they have, that there is a wealth of young talent in the Italian national team. Yeah, 
they got they're looking good for, uh, for for quite some time to come actually with what they've done this summer in men's and women's volleyball at, uh, at junior level I think they scooped up just about everything going absolutely fabulous but who's gonna scoop up this club world champs title it's 1-1 one, one. Perugia knocked back in the first set have come out taken the second and now we are underway in the third Flavio serving for Perugia and Trentino looking for the side out and they're not going to get it it's a great block commit in the middle and Perugia have a break point start so in the first set Trentino really generated a lot of pressure from their serve died off a little bit couldn't really go as full aggression and that may have been the difference in these uh, the first and second set too far away and not really worth risking it is it I mean I, I, um, Lopez was playing in the bronze medal game and he went chasing after a ball and nearly did his knee in, into the crowd and you think it's not the I mean if it was the Olympic gold medal and that's match point all right you're gonna go for that aren't you but if, you've got to think about your own welfare and there are easier and safer ways to meet the fans. Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh. Nice. Trentino get a block back of their own with Micheletto. Crikey, he doesn't even have to jump, does he, to get above the net? Uh, and very good discipline with his hands there. Even though he's reaching out, he still managed to push forward and cut off the angle that he wants to take against the hitter. That's well left. That was close. Rodraskin in having a look at that. He's like, oh, was that not really? Was that out? Yeah, unfortunately for him, it was. Rich Litsky goes back to serve. I think that's that. that that's a good um, leave by Trentino. But that rotation where you've got your your middle blocker. At, at four and your, your outside hitter at three and they're on that and, and the middle blocker wants to get in a position doesn't he to to have that hit and get steps in front of the the, the front court passer at times can block the view to serve in that zone is a really good place to go yeah it, it does take a, a a little bit more time for the receiver to pick up the ball usually <laughs> as uh there was no one picking up that ball oh from... my days that is a one-handed, and he's given it. He's given Leon a warm-up hit. Yeah, there's there's the quirks of every different rotation, as you as you mentioned, uh, Clayton. That there's different solutions and different challenges, and how teams manage those uh, sort of is a big interpretation that the the coach has to bring. continues oh, I having to make an adjustment and it didn't work and for a rich Licky and just a little bit over eager to go and hit that ball stepping on the line and the set location a little bit off from Gianelli they're having to make the late adjustment step to go wider and cut that ball back. Michieletto goes through his pre-serve routine. Puts Kalachi under pressure. Ginelli under a bit of pressure. And Plotnitsky is blocked. Herrera, who's only just come on to court, can't get there quickly enough. Herrera is into the game uh, it's definitely a factor fatigue is a factor in this tournament uh, 
uh, you mentioned that both these teams are, are into the depths of their club season and also Champions League and European competition and now to make this journey to Brazil and uh, to play three games uh, already in, in pretty close proximity to each other in terms of time that the fatigue is a factor so Rick Lischke there is out bringing some fresh legs maybe some uh, fresh inspiration well, Herrera when he's on his game is he can be unstoppable he's absolutely grease lightning when he gets going with his arm swing but he hasn't got going just yet and Trentino open up a four-point lead. So the second set, there was a, a difference in the ability to execute on high balls. The Trentino block just seems to be a little bit better dialed in at the moment in that situation. Incredible touch from Lonzano. But the block doing the job for Perugia. Yeah, tough swing there from uh, Micheletto. The ball's in front of him. He doesn't get a great look at what's happening on the court. He has to track the ball and can't see the block as early as he would like. Russo. Blocking again. Kaczynski's trying to trying to just guide this one over, isn't he? Yeah, this is the situation he's probably trying to find the the top of the block, the hands of the blockers, and get it to pop up and recycle. But with a block that big, you really have to execute that perfectly or else it's coming back down. That one came down. Nicoletto raining some pain. On the pipe attack. Again, that little shift towards position two, putting the pressure on both blockers there to be responsible for the, the short distance sets, opening up space for Micheletto. Well, it's not gone in from Plotnitsky. Bit of a topsy-turvy match, this one. And we saw Trentino start on fire with their serve, but neither team's really been able to, to get much consistency in many facets of the game. That time, it's a big swing from Herrera that gets the block and... Uh, all the way out over the baseline. That's travelled some distance. And Ginelli will go back to the serving line. Kaziski now gets to serve. Uh, well, we'll have some volleyball. We'll break out any moment now. We kind of well <laughs> join the club world missing the surf championships for the moment. But that's just just the way it is when you've got these guys at this level trying to give it everything they've got from the surfing line. It is that risk and reward. Absolutely, the margin of error is quite small, and when you factor in. Travel and tiredness and heat and humidity in Brazil uh, is a little bit different conditions, maybe not for Flavio, but for a lot of the players here. That at the end of a tournament, it's hard to stay in that, that small range where you can execute at your absolute best. Oh, 
what a block that is, Herrera. Shutting down Micheletto. So Micheletto looking to take on the outside hand and uh, found that Herrera's outside hand was more than equal to the task. Ladio went quite quick, the ball a little bit too high, couldn't get a full swing. Nice up from Kaczynski, and he's available on the 10. And they go to Micheletto instead, net touch by Perugia. And Micheletto now increases his points haul, he's on 13 so far for this gold medal match. He's the highest point scorer. And a really nice set by Spertoli, stretching the block out, letting Micheletto take the ball high, work off the hands and drawing the net touch. do for Perugia and now they've just reduced the gap only two in it so while the the mi middle stages of this set may have not seen a lot of old volleyball being played we are set up for what could be a pretty close finish Excellent pass. Oh, wow. Are there any weak points to Leon's game? Uh, you can get some, uh, some pressure on him in reception. He's a good receiver, but not a great receiver. Uh, but if the result is a, that he's hitting a high ball, it's not the worst outcome a lot of the time. Well, that looks like it stayed in Lorenzo's hands a while. Play continues. Oh, Micheletto, has he found the angle? Yes, he has. Anastasi thinks he didn't. Yeah, that, that, sh that shot, that angle is almost too good to believe. Anastasi certainly didn't believe that he could hit it. Is it a wonderful swing from Tricky Mickey? Or is it going to be a point for Perugia? Here we go. It's on its way, and it is... It is out! Only just, though! And that's really tough as well for Denis Espinis. Where that's landed right in front of him like that, he might think it... Uh, it could have been in, but he, it was the right call. He called it. I think he called it as out. No, he called it as in, didn't he, actually? Yeah, that's the thing. And so, because it's kind of obscuring the line a bit from his angle. Well, either way, Perugia just struggling to find a serve at the moment. And so Trentino just about holding on to their lead. Micheletto. Massive from Micheletto. So we see again Kalachi really trying to come and help out his receivers on the, the seam between them. So again, just a little bit of confusion there. And the result is a really important point for Trentino. Just gives them a little bit of breathing room. Something for Anastasi to ponder here. Oh, well watched by Gianelli. It's the speed of that swing from Plopnitsky. Yeah, such a fast arm, and he generates so much force. He gets on it early, 
and the block is not able to get over, so they're reaching high and squeezes down the front again. Yes, that was squeezed straight down, wasn't it? Like a breakfast orange. And that's a good swing from Kaziski. So this was the ball that they struggled to get him in the second set. If he can take the ball high, he's still a, a really, really dangerous player, even at his age. Nice work, Herrera. Piccinelli's come in to replace Kalachi as uh, Libro on that serve for serve-receive. And Herrera with a great swing to beat Spertoli. Wow, 346. Now we're getting, see, this is what I love about these the stats now, the stats, the, the graphic heights that we're getting, because this is about proper arm swing, proper ball contact, not what we see, you know, when you're doing your jump heights and we've seen on social, Ginelli going up and just reaching as high as he can to touch a, a little bit of tape or whatever it is. That's a proper spike height. And 346, that's a metre and three centimetres above the height of the net. He's, a, he's an athletic phenomenon, is Herrera, and uh, quite often you'll see players hitting around the 330 mark. That extra 15 centimetres does make a difference. Mind you, when he gets it wrong, if he's a bit low, then he's going to get blocked, and Podraskin in reminding him of that. Excellent work. Trentino holding on to their lead. He's definitely not one to die wondering. But... We talked about it earlier in the game, the ability from uh, Podrashkin and Adlisanach to get their hands over the net. I think Andre Anastasi might have an earpiece in and referring to the, the quality of service. Uh, <laughs> now you get the feeling that Herrera just didn't see Podraskini was coming. He'd made his mind up, hadn't he? He was like, right, I can see a gap. And then all of a sudden, Podraskini filled it. Yeah, that's uh, one of the, the skills of that has kept him in the high level of the game for so long is to get there and make a last move with great effect. Herrera, it's all or nothing. And that was everything. And the difference between the last two balls, this ball here, you can see he comes to the ball and cuts it off, gets on it early. Whereas the last ball, he was waiting on the sideline and gave the block a chance to still be in the play. Lavia got the feeling he went just a, a tad too early on that high ball and couldn't then get a full swing into the block to take it on. As he saw that it dropped inside, he had to accelerate and he's made the decision that he's going to try and play with the top of the block. But again, we talked about it earlier, not being able to find the hands but finding the wrist or the forearm and the ball goes straight down. Bringing Perugia right back into this competition. Not going to happen. A serve. And the uh, fans uh, not minding too much. It's only Lorenzano running into them, which isn't going to do too much damage. He's teeny tiny compared to everybody else, isn't he? Look at that. He's just he's, uh, he's protected the Perugia fan, as it turned out. We still got hit by the ball. <laughs> what a serve, though, from Plotnitsky. And this is the thing about Perugia, isn't it? They might have been three behind. They're now only one behind, but when you've got that talent around the court, they can make something happen from the serving line. 
va bene? Vado a cercare, che sono difficili da alzare, che è tutta bagnata. Forza! Okay, vai, vai. Oh. You're absolutely right there, Clayton. Uh, they don't need to be playing the best volleyball in the world because they have the, the firepower that as long as they're close, there's a chance that they can string together some aces, they can play a little bit of defense and get some high ball opportunities and just keep their opposition under pressure from what is not the best position for them to be in terms of playing their best volleyball. Natalie on the chase, and it's going to be free ball here for Perugia. Four attacking options, all moving. And Leon doesn't find a way through. Herrera does. It's all square, 18 apiece. This is a fantastic example of how Leon just tilts the floor. You have to go to him in a good situation. It gets a double block, and then the, the recycle, the chance to play again. The... Trentino block has to pay respect to him and it leaves a really big space for Herrera to crush cross court. Another big serve from Plotnitsky. Oh, Kaziski's not caught any fingers with that. Unforced error. And suddenly Perugia are in front. 15 18 down to 19 18 up. Off of that man serving. Another huge serve that takes the middle out of the equation. Oh dear, someone's got to come play it. Oh, that's a shame. Net touch. And ha, there's a little bit of an inquisition there. It's like, wasn't me. Leon's like, was that you, Flavio? And he's dead. Yeah, it was. Sorry. And this is uh, the flip side of not having so, not having a pure opposite on the court. That the the flexibility. Of, of being able to find different solutions in different situations. Trentino not really wanting to use Kaziski so much in a high ball, maybe more in system from the right side and looking to push that ball to position four and not getting it in a situation to attack. Well, nothing Ginelli can do about that one. Good up. Lovely play. Well, not, not the greatest set from Plotnitsky, but uh, when you've got Leon on the end of it, he can make a lot of situations a little bit better. Well, he's well, not I... quite. Sorry, Clayton. Well, no, it says he's also quite fortunate. Nelly's just come on a little bit, at, not quite up to game speed. Podraskin was still bought and sold by it, and so yeah. And then you've got Leon to go to, so he gets he gets something, makes something happen from as you said, not such a good set from Plotnitsky. Oh, I'd say what a swing from Micheletto. He makes it look like a badminton net at times. I, I've definitely just used the word long to describe him more than once. Just phenomenal. Rousseau getting a rare swing through the middle. Certainly as far as this set's concerned. And now Herrera can go back and try and cause some damage. Plotnitsky's moved up to second. And in scoring so far, 10 points for him. Herrera on five. Oh, has he made it six? They're having a think about it. They want to have a look. Must have been really close. Which probably means now when we see the graphics, it's going to be miles out. <laughs> it's miles out. <laughs> uh -oh. oh dear. It's funny though, I was chatting with the referees about that because you see that and you think, how did the ref not see that? Or, you know, why, mind you, the ref could give it a sack, but from the player's point of view, because that ball's travelling so fast, even from the ref's time, by the time they've tracked it and seen it, it's bounced and gone, and, and it can be really quite deceiving as to where it's landed. Good touch from Kaziski. Nice 
Nice up from Leon. Who's going to get it back? Oh, and it comes back at him with interest from Lizinac. It's a, it's a big block in front of Leon. The ball drops inside a little bit. So it's coming down as opposed to him coming to meet it. When he's cutting off the angle. It's just about as big a block as Trentino could muster as well with Kaziski and uh, Mikioletto Podraskinin or Lizinets there in the middle. But there's still work to be done. 22 22, 1 1. It is evenly poised at the moment. Slight advantage with Trentino if they can side out, but it's Leon serving for Perugia. Key moment you feel in this set. Oh, it's not coming back. It's a massive ace from Leon. Back when Wilfredo Leon was playing for Zenit Kazan, there was a, a similar situation at the end of the fifth set of a World Club Championships match. And he went back and just drilled a couple. He knows his team needs him to do something similar now and has answered at the first opportunity. Well, that was... Uh... Zenit Kazan won it back in 2017 when they beat Chivitinova. Well, back it goes again. This time, Kaziski finds a way past the block. And we are leveled up again and now it's Michieletto back to serve and we've seen him score already from the serving line and oh what a touch brilliant from Herrera Russo makes the block, that's incredible from Perugia. What a way to get the side out and bring up set point. You don't win 18 games in a row, with, row without those kind, kind of moments. Not giving up on the play. Oh, just phenomenal. And you think and it, it's free ball here, you're expecting them to score, aren't you? And this would have been something discussed in the, a free ball situation. The middles can make that choice. Kaziski making a good choice. And it's 24-24. First to get two clear now takes the set. What a great game this is. Well, we had some rough moments, but uh, we've definitely come down to crunch time and both teams not wanting to let this opportunity slip away. There's a chance now for Trentino. It's a little bit back on for Kaziski, and that's gone straight down and straight in. And Perugia get another set point chance. Oh, Kaziski's furious with himself. And we see the margin of error again. That high ball set just a little bit inside. He has to wait. Kaziski has to wait just a little bit. Gives the block a little bit more time to get over the net and be closed and well formed. And that, that's the margin sometimes. The time for Semenyuk to be setting that one up, having come back onto court. Because he's got to just shrug that off now. He might get the ball again here. And he does this. Michieletto to the rescue. So Spertoli back front row again. So we may be looking potentially for a block substitution for him at some point. Kaziski. You, you can't dwell on, on past points, can you? You make an error, you've just got to make a note of it and move on. And sometimes it's easier said than done. We didn't go and try and make up for it from the serving line. There's a substitution coming. Plotnitsky, it is who's going to be serving. 
He's back on now, across the back row for Semenyuk. Oh, doesn't make it over. That's about 18 touches. And the set goes the way of Perugia. 27-25, and they lead by two sets to one. The chase down by Herrera on that ball may be, in hindsight, at the end of this game, one of the absolutely defining moments. Uh, not letting the ball die, and then the commit block by Russo giving Perugia more than enough opportunity to take this one and uh, get their noses in front on the big score. Just moments, aren't there? Um, moments in the match. Moments for that chap to, uh, to do his little bit in front of the camera in a second. And uh, moments for us to have a look at uh, where the set of contacts were for Trento and Crikey. Well, that just shows you how good the serving was. That's all the sets so far, not just the last one, but across all three. And really just, what, 32% only in, in that optimum area, the green zone. And a little bit better, actually, when you look at that for, uh, for Perugia. Yeah, the, the ball in the, the second zone at 41%. Uh, with a, a setter like Gianelli, he can still take the ball high and play fast. That leaves a few more options open and a little bit longer. So while it's not the, the best or optimal outcome, it's still a situation where they can play a pretty aggressive game from. Confirmation. That's confirmation of the scores for you. Trentino getting off to an incredible start and uh, surprising Perugia taking the first set by five, but Perugia bouncing back. 25-23 and then a, an absolute thriller. An exciting end to the set. 27-25 for uh, Perugia in that one. Uh, but a few changes made by Perugia to get them to that point. Herrera coming in, Rich Licky going out, uh, Semenyuk going out, and uh, Plotnitsky coming in, as well as uh, Kalachi going off a little bit, and Piccinelli, Piccinelli coming in. It's be interesting to see how uh, Anastasi's going to start this fourth set. Do you keep Herrera on? I think at the moment he's playing with really good energy, uh, and at this point in the tournament, sometimes that can be enough. You have to manage how efficient he's being, whether he's bringing more to the table than he's taking away. But he's uh, giving them every opportunity to win, and that energy in a, in a long tournament can be a vital factor. Well, that's quite incredible. 12 unforced errors from Perugia, just seven for Trento. So if they gave Trento five points extra, but they made up for it in other areas, which they had to. So from Trento's point of view, what do they need to do to get back into this now? Uh, I think the first uh, element is uh, maintain a little bit more service pressure like they did in the first set. But when they get forced out of system, the scoring from the right side, Kaziski is doing what he can, but the execution on the set there is not giving him the most opportunity to score. Nicely done, good start. And it's just got better. This reception, or this uh, transition play, it's not perfect. And the stretch play fast, the Plotnitsky, the left hander cutting it off. Wow, so it's 3 nothing already. 
Perugia really, really good... got a taste for it now, haven't they? Yeah, a really, a really good one-on-one -on -one block from Herrera. So at last, the side that comes for Trento. And this is the all or nothing from Herrera. He's... Uh, He's tried to take on the, the shot down the line. Not his natural swing, I would say. And just misses the baseline. Oh, look at that. It changes so quickly, doesn't it? Suddenly, from 3 nothing, a block from Kaziski. And we are back level. And great recognition of the situation from Kaziski. Seeing the ball dropping inside and being able to be balanced enough to come back and get forward to score. Which gives an opportunity for Spurtley to keep the pressure up from the service line in the best possible way. Scrappy, but it it works. It gets through. Kiletto didn't really want to have a look at that. Just shoved the shoved the hand in the way, hoping for the best. Oh, what a serve from Plodnitsky. He has done it again. It's the third time he's gone back and just ripped a serve, not giving Trentino any breathing space when he's there with the ball in hand. That is just incredible. It's the Plotnitsky show at the moment. Micheletto has a chance to get level, to bring the team back into this. And in what is uh, an ebbing and flowing fourth set. Oh, good touch by Micheletto. Oh, and a great block. Just a wonderful block from Flavio. But uh, the dig, though, from Micheletto. Two means he's 11, and he's down like lightning to get that. Well, he needed almost all of those two meters 11, just covering a huge amount of space along the baseline. But we can see Lavia needing to take take on the block in a slightly different fashion there, not taking the risk. Not taking the risk required to score. And then all of a sudden, 
Trentino is on the back foot again. Oh, yes, brilliant from Herrera. With the energy, the excitement, he's going full. And once again, Leon hitting from position four. You have to pay full respect to him out there, which just leaves Herrera this space to operate. Good up. Leon! No, has it gone wide? Yes, it has. What a touch that is from Herrera. And Trentina is so close to making the block. It makes you wonder, doesn't it, how, how Perugia came to spot Herrera playing in, uh, in France. And they made another block here, Perugia. They really are on a roll. Yeah, the player of his, his physical abilities uh, is sure to get noticed, but and often uh, you talked about it earlier in the broadcast, Clayton, that it's the quality of the players around you really has an impact. That's the one thing, isn't it? I mean, we, we talked about it off air before the, before the game started and talking about like, the likes of Semenya coming in, for example, to, to Perugia. You think, oh, big jump. But what it does is it, it gives players that freedom, doesn't it, to, to play their level of volleyball, knowing that everyone around them is going to be doing that level of volleyball, if not higher. Absolutely. The opportunity to really focus on executing in your role knowing that your teammates can hold up their end of the bargain. It uh, can draw players into their very best level. Chase for Spertoli. Nice. Bit of space to work with for Kaziski on that swing between him and the block. It's a, a difficult ball coming over his right shoulder, but the fact that he can go take it at the top of his reach is giving him the best opportunity to score. That's something Trentino hasn't necessarily done consistently throughout this game, but when the ball is there, he's still got the ability to find a point. Right now, though, it's looking a little bit tricky for Trentino. Perugia are playing great. And you can see as, as the team came in to celebrate Plotnitsky, making sure everyone's focused on what their next action's going to be. And for Russo, that is to serve an ace. This time using the float from his float toss, the, uh, the hybrid serve. Nothing. And with a bit of venom on it too. It certainly was, wasn't it? That was that's just almost impossible to deal with. You just get the feeling maybe Lorenzetti's seeing the writing on the wall here. Nelly is in. There's Russo still serving. Thank you. 
Andrea Anastasi knowing this is the moment they can lock up a world club championship in this next few moments, but they have to take control of the game or maintain control of the game right now. That will certainly help. Herrera, Flavio, Plotnitsky at the net, plotting what they're going to do here to stop Trentino. Gianelli's going to have the first go, try and stop it coming over with his serve. Certainly takes the middle out of the equation. Micheletto is dug. Now, what can Plotnitsky do with that? Does the right thing, keeps it in play. Oh, well done, Kalachi. Gone after the first ball, and it's Plotnitsky who wraps it off the hands for the point. Great athleticism by Kolacci. Absolutely. The, the control there to keep the ball in front of the hitter, not just put it back into play, but give a chance to attack. And Plotnitsky resisting the temptation to try and bury that ball, works off the top of the block. Well played by Kaziski. But with the Perugia lead sitting at six points, hope is fading fast for Trentino. Can Spurtoli start their recovery? Ooh, not like that, he can't. Now he's going to have to do it from setting. the way to enjoy it get the ear defenders on now right now Trentino have got some defending of their own to do off this Plotnitsky serve God, it's a huge serve what a good ball in from Micheletto and they get to run the pipe Nelly gets a swing oh no sorry Donovan gets a swing Shironak I keep <laughs> both him and Nelly do look so similar and with my poorly eyes I can't see that massive number written on his shirt <laughs> Good swing. Well, it's all too much for some. And it is looking like it might just be too much for Trentino here. But, and this is the thing, well, the, the thing about having the players that they've got, Micheletto could get a run of serves and could get right back in this with Trentino. Oh, he's done it again, Herrera! Oh, what a touch! Brilliant touch by Piccinelli! Is that in? No, no, it isn't. What an incredible rally. Just phenomenal defence at this stage in the game to still be scrambling for every single ball, even though they're up by now five points, but... This is the level of execution required. Not a big serve from Micheletto. That one's not coming back. Oh, he's turning it on. Here is Micheletto. Four points, the difference now. You did call it, Clayton. He's a, a weapon with the ball in hand and hope still exists for Trentino. Mm. 
palla in mezzo al campo abbiamo i nostri giocatori di palata che sono dei fenomeni questa sera la risolviamo così quindi calma ancora ragazzi mi permetto di dire i tempi del muro su Casischi io voglio che muriamo Casischi una volta non tanto una volta da qui a fine partita so Andrea Anastasi identifying that their ability to block effectively and defend effectively against Kaziski is a key factor for Perugia in the latter stages of this set. It's another one! Wow, we. There is a reason why he's considered probably the best young player in the world. And he's giving us an absolute show of why that opinion is very commonly held. Three in a row, and now the gap is only three. Can he do it again? It's not bad, there's no middle coming, that's for sure. But Leon is. Brilliant from Leon, that's so clever. He knows the space is there because he can hit strong from so many situations. And just the deft touch. All the defenders in the back part of the court. Micheletto comes again, scores on the pipe. So that's, a, that's an important point, isn't it? Because they've sided out instantly, and now they're going back again, and if Lizinac gets a run, well, they could be right back in it. Bit of pressure on Perugia to get their side out. Oh, it's a big serve. Oh, Leon's missed. So every break point, every every point now for the team serving is absolutely vital. We see Trentino's ability to just chip away, chip away, chip away. A little bit of pressure on Lizzie Nets. First and foremost, it's got to be in. Ooh, and it needed to be in, really. He's gone for that. And that just lets Perugia off the hook. Doesn't chance for a quick conflab, quick chin wag. Get themselves refocused and now Herrera, but Herrera's hit or miss. There is no there's no halfway house for Herrera at all. It's up it's just it's a hundred percent every time. And you have to live with the good and bad of that as a coach. In that moment, Anastasi wishing he had more of the good than the bad. Oh, yes. He's going to do it. He'll do it at least once in every match. It's going to happen. He doesn't play a game and not go over on two at some point. You've got to be on him all the time. And they just weren't, were they? He's been waiting for the moment. He's so high up. But his ability to still set the ball one-handed in those situations means that the block can't commit to him. Oh, and that one's not coming back. Well, anything Micheletto can do, Leon can do better. And it's 21-17 now, and that might just settle things down for Perugia. Massive serve. Decent chase from Shefaronok, but he's not going to bring it back. Leon can go again. Oh, he's knocked over. Lorenzano. And that's not coming back either. I wonder if Leon's thinking these pesky young upstarts. I'll show them. Oh, goodness me. Yeah, that's, uh, there's not a lot of finesse in that serve. Just blasts. 
done it again. That's three in a row. Or is it? That must have come back through the antenna. Yes, it did. Massive serve again from Leon. It's a steep learning curve to go from playing junior volleyball to playing Italian Super League and then to be playing for World Club Championships in a crucial moment. Not a bad effort, but Leon is more than enough for the Trentino reception to handle at the moment. You think that Kaziski would step in and help out, put four in. He's still not, though. Still leaving it on three. Unfortunately, from Trentino's perspective, Leon doesn't get that one over. Now Nelly is coming in. So here is the blocking sub that we postulated upon earlier in the game. But might be a little bit too little too late. Well played Herrera, it's match point now for Perugia. The impact that Herrera has had on this game, to have a card like that to play for Anastasi is probably one of the reasons why they've won 18 in a row and are on the precipice of winning a World Club Championship. The debutants to this competition serving for gold. Well, they're going to have to wait a little bit. Lavia gets the side out, but what a position now for Perugia. Five opportunities to get it done from siding out from Cambio Pala. And they go to the middle. What a set from Cinelli to Flavio. And then what a fitting moment for Flavio as well. Back in Brazil. And he hits the winner. And Perugia take gold here in Betim. Well, we still yet to have, since this competition started back in 1989, we have yet to have a 3-2. And I thought, I really thought this might be the one that would go to five with the way that the first couple of sets went, but it's not to be. It is Perugia that got it down by three sets to one. Yeah, Trentino threw everything at them early in the game, uh, but the insertion of Herrera was a, decide a deciding factor. The energy and aggression that he brought when the game was maybe a little bit lacking in quality. And the ability for Trentino to score in situations which weren't perfect seemed to be their Achilles heel today. But deserving winners from Perugia, their winning run continues. And as it stands, they are the best club volleyball team in the world. And nobody can argue that. What a great game. What a great performance. It took a little while, didn't it? It was a bit of a slow burner. But once it got going, we saw some absolutely sensational volleyball and what a great way to finish it absolutely a nice moment for Flavio even the disappointment there from the Trentino players they know they'll see Perugia again but to the victors go the spoils yeah, the likelihood is they're probably going to be back on the on the same plane together heading back to Italy after this one maybe even sat next to each other one with uh, somebody who sat there Leon will be there with this gold medal and It'll be uh, Micheletto sat next to him, maybe with the silver. And probably, uh, but the thing is, the thing is, it's just great rivalries on court, but um, off court, great friendships as well, isn't there? And, and it's played, it was played in a really good sporting spirit, that game. Absolutely. The, uh, you can see that there's familiarity between a lot of these players and that it's a, a genuine sporting respect. And it's really hard to, to come up against such a high quality team and give them an inch. So, to Perugia, congratulations. Uh, some excellent performances, but Herrera, what a game changer. He really is. He, he can come and he can deliver. And, and, you, and that's why Perugia have taken him out there. They've gone, right, we know, okay, we know what you're really good at. 
I mean, no way you can you can cost us, but you, what you're really good at is so good that we want you in this team. And there's a little look at how it went in the end in that fourth set. 12 attacks to nine, five aces from Perugia. And Micheletto yes, had that run, but it wasn't enough. We lamented the quality of serving earlier in the game, but in the big moments, that was the decisive factor for Perugia. So Micheletto absolutely giving them a, a, a little bit of a scare there towards the end. He certainly gave them something to think about. Score sheet needs to be signed. Not only that, it was miles up in the air as well, Flavio. Look at that. That's top of the antenna stuff, putting that one away. Well, he certainly enjoyed that moment. He's a club world champion. 